So have you ever had a good idea and then it turned out to be a really bad idea? This is this year's bad idea. A lot of people wanted me to build a mobile 240 volt solar power system and I did it, here it is, but it's ridiculously heavy. But it does work and it can charge a Tesla, it can do all sorts of other stuff. You could back up a critical loads panel even if it has a 240 volt plug. And we charge it with a 650p plug, which I have in my workshop, so I can charge it up. I get 10 kilowatt hours down here. And then we have this cable to discharge it, and I have a Tesla adapter, so I can charge my Tesla with this system. And with 10 kilowatt hours, you get about 40 miles of range with a Model 3. But is it worth it? Is it worth the time to build this? Probably not. I love this little system that we built and I also added a converter that I want to show you. But this size, this is just obnoxious. This is better for a stationary system and let me show you how hard it is to move it. So this one is easy. I mean, it's kind of heavy, but you can move it around no problem. But this thing is a totally different beast. I have to put my whole weight and kind of jump into it like that. Whew. Once it's like this, you can move it around, but man, this is just ridiculously heavy. About 300 pounds. Whew. And this hand truck is from Harbor Freight. It can actually handle 600 pounds. And this is only 300 pounds. We've got about 110, 110, and 80 pounds up here, plus the cables. Now this all-in-one can output 6,000 watts at 240 volts, and you do not need to put two inverters into parallel for a split phase output. But the only downside is as a low PV input voltage of 150 volts. Even our small generator over there does 500 volts. So that's the biggest downside, but these are solid units. I've been using this one for like three or four years now and I use this with my raw cell system and I actually like it a lot because it's so easy to set up. You just connect it to a battery, connect it to an input and output cord and you're done. You can use extension cords like a NEMA 1450, connect it to these terminals and have a full system in just a couple steps. Now what we could do is put this on a cart. That might be a better idea idea, more wheels and more distributed weight, because having it on this hand truck is just way too hard to move around. Even to put this up against a wall is like practically impossible. Actually, we could push it. We could push it a little bit. Actually, <laughs> this whole thing flexes. Like it really is way too much weight for this cart. But yeah, it's, it's just too difficult. So enough about this system, let's go over to the new modifications I've made to the small one. Now for this system, I did some upgrades. We have a converter circuit that takes the 48 volts and it converts it to 12 volts and it supplies a 12 volt fuse block. And then over here, I added some MC4 extension cables so I can connect my own solar array, anything from 120 volts to 500 volts. And I love this thing. This is a fantastic size. It's easy to move around and I actually got to test it. There were some guys working on my air conditioner and they needed an extension cord and they needed it for a long time, for like three or four hours. So I just wheeled this out to them and I said, hey, I want you to test this thing out and see if you have any problems. And they used it the whole time and they use multiple tools with this thing without a single issue. Now one upgrade that people want to see is an RV30 amp plug. And all you do to replace this surge strip is you buy an extension cord RV30 amp plug and then you strip it and then you stick it in here. It is literally that easy. But for most people, a surge strip is fantastic. Or you could add an outlet and like put it on the side, but I prefer this. Or you could put two surge strips into that terminal. That terminal is massive, so you could absolutely do that. Or 10 gauge solid copper to a load center. But it is just so simple how it is. And we can run 12 volt loads, so this is like a complete system now. The only issue is alternator charging. And the solution for that is buying a 48 volt externally regulated alternator and charging this battery directly with that. And that's the smart way to do it. You do not want to use your vehicle's charging system to charge deeply discharged solar batteries. That's just a bad idea. They're not designed for it. 
um, and you can make it work and regulate the current, but I would not touch that thing. You should have a separate alternator for charging solar batteries if you're gonna go that route. Also, if you have a small array and you wanna connect it to this battery, there are boost converters available through Renogy. So you can have a 100 watt panel charging a 48 volt battery, even though the voltage is lower. So that is available and that's what we used on my golf cart build. So I'm gonna have a link below for that. But you can make this system work in any RV with any size array and you can run the 12 volt load. So you can really adapt this to pretty much any type of mobile system you want. And I'm not gonna put this on a four wheel cart because it would take up too much space. Having it vertical like this means that I can stuff it into a closet or in a corner in my shop and it's just, it's smaller, it has a smaller footprint. But this system could benefit with a four wheel cart because it's just so hard to move. Even though it's vertical, it is like impossible for me to like push this up against a wall or move it around. It is really heavy. And I think it's because of the big wheels. If you think about the leverage point or the fulcrum or whatnot and how you have to tip it over it's it's really hard to lift it up over those big wheels so yeah not the best idea but uh, I did it and it works so that's pretty cool anyways just a quick update I love these small systems this one is my favorite though anybody can build this it's super simple and it can do everything and you can make it bigger. If you got a bigger hand cart like this one and you put two of these side by side, you could have a seriously powerful system. Actually two of these would be the same power output as one of these. So that would be wild, but you would have more um, wiring, you'd have to set up the communication and everything else. This one is plug and play. You just have two battery cables and that's it. But yeah, it is possible to put two of these together and you could have two solar arrays up to 500 volts, which would be pretty darn cool as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.